we need to consider what's called the Earth's gravitational binding energy, which is the cumulative strength of the planet's gravity holding itself together. The Earth's binding energy is roughly 2.24 times 10 to the 32nd joules, which is enormously powerful. The current nuclear arsenal could hypothetically generate 2.67 times 10 to the 19th joules of energy, which is a lot, but still 1 million billion times too weak to blow up the planet. If we replaced each currently available nuclear warhead with the Tsar Bomba, the largest nuclear device ever detonated, we would need over one quadrillion bombs. As you might have guessed, making that many nuclear weapons is simply beyond the reach of our current technology. Not to mention the fact that we would likely run out of materials before we got anywhere close to one quadrillion bombs. Okay, so nukes are out. What could we create that's even more destructive? If we're willing to use more exotic materials, we could hypothetically generate enough antimatter to blast the Earth into thousands of fragments. Antimatter is strange and still largely a mystery to scientists, but think of it like this. If you take a positive one and a negative one, then add them together, you're left with zero, or nothing. That's how matter and antimatter react with one another in a nutshell. Antimatter has so much destructive potential that just one gram could create a bomb the equivalent of the warhead dropped on Hiroshima in World War II. Of course, destroying a city is one thing, but blasting an entire planet to pieces is something entirely different. In order to create a warhead powerful enough to destroy the Earth, we'd need to create and harness the power of 25 trillion tons of antimatter. So, while this method hypothetically could be possible, it would require an enormous amount of antimatter to work properly. As of right now, scientists have only managed to create and store a few hundred antimatter atoms. At our current technology level, it would take about 10 billion years to make one gram. So, like nukes, antimatter can be ruled out due to time and scale constraints. Our first two ideas may not be possible with our current capabilities, but we're not out of options just yet. If we're still intent on physically breaking the Earth apart, then causing a collision with a very fast, very massive object might do the trick. Technically, you wouldn't even need the object to be super massive. Just like a cannonball fired from a cannon does more damage than one thrown by hand, a relatively small asteroid could work if it were accelerated to high enough speeds, say 90% of the speed of light, as difficult and unlikely as that would be. To be sure of the planet's destruction, we'd need something much, much larger than any known asteroid. In the early days of the Earth's existence, the planet was struck by an object roughly the size of Mars, breaking apart some of its mass and eventually giving birth to our moon. In order to cause even more damage and break the Earth apart completely, we'd need an object the size of Mars traveling at a speed of about 50 kilometers per second. Venus is another great candidate for a kinetic warhead, weighing in at roughly 81% of the Earth's mass, considerably more than Mars' 11%. Of course, we'd have to solve the problem of how to actually accelerate a planet to such high speeds and lock it into a collision course with Earth. One method would be to use gravitational assists, redirecting a steady stream of asteroids to swing around our giant billiard ball, slowly nudging it into the correct trajectory. Is it possible? Theoretically, yes. Whether we could be accurate enough and generate sufficient speed to blast the Earth to bits is another question. So, if you still want to tackle the massive challenge of annihilating the Earth, you've got your options. 1 quadrillion nuclear warheads, 25 trillion tons of antimatter, or a cosmic cannonball the size of Mars.